The story of ancient Africa is equally captivating, intricate, and refined as that of any other ancient civilization in numerous aspects. However, nearly every investigation of this subject focuses solely on Egypt, neglecting the other fascinating narratives. This video will discuss about the rising of another Nubian kingdom that was centered in Napata and later Meroe in present-day Sudan, which rose to even conquer Egypt and become the rulers of its 25th dynasty. This was after the fall of its predecessor, the Kushite kingdom centered in Kerma after its invasion by Egypt. The link is in the description for those who missed our previous video on Kerma's fascinating history. After the fall of Kerma in 1504 BCE, Egypt exerted control of the kingdom for around 400 years, and at around 1070 BCE, Egypt's dominion over Nubia came to an end. This was largely as a result of this new kingdom of Kush, which had started growing in power and was able to assert its independence from Egypt. The kingdom was divided into two periods. The Napatan period which lasted from 750 BCE to 542 BCE, and was characterized by the rise of the Kushite dynasty and the conquest of Egypt, and the Meroitic period which existed from 542 BCE towards the year 400 CE, and was characterized by the rise of the city of Meroe as the new capital of the kingdom. Around 747 BCE, the Kushite kings conquered the land of Egypt and ruled for almost a century as Egypt's 25th dynasty. Before this conquest, the Napatan ruling class had been established by King Alara, who during his time, was able to unify all of Upper Nubia, from Meroe to the Third Cataract, and establish Napata as the religious capital of Kush. Although he was not a 25th dynasty king since he never controlled any region of Egypt during his reign, his legacy helped establish the foundations of this dynasty and set the stage for the conquest of Egypt by his successors. Alara is also thought to have had a long reign because future Nubian kings hoped that they would enjoy a reign as long as Alara's. Kashta, the king who followed Alara, expanded Nubia's reach to Elephantine and Thebes in Upper Egypt and ruled the area as a Nubian territory. The name Kashta is frequently translated as the Kushite, and during his rule, his daughter, Amenderis, served as divine adoratress of Amun in Thebes. Pia, the son of Kashta, who was previously spelled as Pianki, was one of the most successful kings of the Kushite dynasty, as he extended the kingdom's reach to Egypt and became the founder of the famous 25th Egyptian dynasty. Pia's conquest of Egypt was a culmination of a series of military campaigns he had undertaken in Nubia and Egypt to establish his control over the region. His military achievements have been recorded in the Victory Stella at Jebel Barkal which states, Hear what I have done in exceeding the ancestors. I am the king. The representation of God. The living image of a tomb. Who issued from the womb marked as ruler. Who is feared by those greater than he. Whose father knew and whose mother perceived even in the egg that he would be ruler the good god, beloved of the gods, the son of Re, who acts with his two arms, Pia, beloved of Amun. Pia's invasion of Egypt began when he led his army from Napata to Thebes, the southern capital of Egypt, where he was welcomed by local leaders and priests who were dissatisfied with the rule of the Libyan pharaohs. Pia's army quickly defeated the Libyan forces, and he was crowned as the pharaoh of Egypt and then marched northward, consolidating his power and defeating any resistance along the way. He changed the Horus name from Strong Bull appearing crowned in Thebes to Strong Bull appearing in Napata to imply that the Kushites had changed history and defeated their former Egyptian conquerors in Thebes. He also revived one of the greatest features of the Old and Middle Kingdoms, the pyramid construction. During his reign, which was between 744 BCE to 714 BCE, local kings of Lower Egypt were essentially free to do what they wanted without Pia's oversight until his successor, Shabitku, who was also his son, later rectified this situation by attacking and defeating them in his second year of reign, thus asserting full control. Shabitku's reign was between 714 BCE to 705 BCE, according to the most recent academic research, and was succeeded by his brother Shabaka, who became the third king of the 25th Egyptian dynasty and ruled Egypt from approximately 705 to 690 BCE. One of his most significant achievements was transferring the capital of Egypt from Thebes to Memphis, a city that was strategically located near the Nile Delta, making it easier to control trade and commerce in the region. He also sponsored religious texts and helped to preserve and translate ancient Egyptian literature. Taharqa was the fourth and the most famous king of the 25th dynasty of Egypt, who ruled from approximately 690 BCE to 664 BCE. 
His rise to power was marked with controversy as he is believed to have taken the throne illegitimately by overthrowing his uncle, Shabaka, who was the rightful heir to the throne. Earlier, it had been thought that Taharka had succeeded his elder brother Shabitku, but recent findings indicate that there was a king, Shabaka, who ruled between them. Taharka was crowned in Memphis and ruled Egypt as pharaoh from Tanis, a city in the Nile Delta, and explicitly states in Stella No. 5 of Kawa that he succeeded his predecessor after the latter's death with the statement, I received the crown in Memphis after the falcon flew to heaven, which is thought was an attempt by Taharka to try and legitimize his accession to power. In Stella No. 4, Taharka states that, he, referring to himself, sailed northward to Thebes amongst a beautiful young people that His Majesty, the late King Shabitku, had sent from Nubia. He was there in Thebes with him. He appreciated him more than any of his brothers. Which was followed by a description of the poor state of the Temple of Kawa as observed by the prince. On Stella No. 5, Taharka says that sometime after his arrival in Egypt under a different king, whom he decided not to name, there occurred the death of this monarch, referring to Shabaka, and then his own accession to the throne occurred. Taharka's evasiveness on the identity of his predecessor suggests that he usurped power and chose to legitimize his kingship by conveniently stating the possible factor propaganda that Shabitku favored him more than all his brothers and all his children. The two snakes in the crown of Pharaoh Taharka indicate that he was the king of both the lands of Egypt and Nubia. Once he had secured his position, Taharka embarked on an ambitious building program, constructing monuments and temples across both Egypt and Nubia. He also continued the tradition of promoting both Egyptian and Nubian culture and religion that had been established by his predecessors and restored ancient temples and supported the worship of the god Amun, with inscriptions indicating that he gave large amounts of gold to the temple of Amun at Kawa. His reign was very prosperous in the Egyptian empire, and the king is also remembered for his military campaigns as he successfully repelled an invasion by the Assyrians. Taharka's military success is documented in inscriptions from the Mut Temple at Karnak that show a list of conquered Asiatic principalities and other inscriptions from the Sanam Temple depicting conquered peoples and countries. In 674 BCE, King Esarhaddon of Assyria launched a campaign to conquer Egypt. He invaded the country with a large army, but Taharka and his forces met them in battle and were able to defeat the Assyrians outright, according to Babylonian records. This victory was significant because it stopped the Assyrian advance and protected Egypt from invasion for a time. The Assyrian sources are somewhat vague about the details of the defeat, and some scholars have suggested that it may have been one of Assyria's worst defeats. This is because the Assyrians did not invade Egypt again for many years, and when they did, they were unable to gain control of the country. After Taharka's victory over the Assyrians in 674 BCE, Esarhaddon, the Assyrian king, launched another invasion of Egypt in 671 BCE. This time, he managed to conquer northern Egypt, including Memphis, and imposed tribute on the people. Taharka, who had fled to the south, was unable to resist the Assyrian forces and was defeated. Despite this defeat, Taharka continued to resist Assyrian rule and tried to regain control of Egypt. However, he was unable to mount a successful counterattack, and the Assyrians remained in control of Egypt for the next few years. During this conquest, Esarhaddon captured many members of Taharka's family and court, including Prince Nes Anhurit and several royal wives who were sent to Assyria as hostages. Esarhaddon also seized many treasures and artifacts from Egypt, including the colossal statues of Taharka that were found at the entrance of his palace at Nineveh. Taharka died in Thebes in 664 BCE and was buried in Nuri, inside a very large pyramid. Standing at around 50 meters tall, this pyramid was the first and the largest ever built at the site. It was made of sandstone, and the burial chamber inside it contained a sarcophagus made of black granite, which was decorated with images of Taharka wearing the double crown of Egypt and holding various symbols of power. Taharka's choice of Nuri as his burial site set a precedent for future Kushite kings, and close to 20 later kings were also buried at the site in similar pyramids. After his death, Tantamani, who was also known as Tanataman, succeeded him as the pharaoh of the 25th dynasty. Tantamani was Taharka's appointed successor and also the son of Shabaka, the third king of the dynasty. He faced a challenge to his authority when the Assyrians invaded Lower Egypt and established their control over the region. In response, Tantamani led his army northward to challenge the Assyrian forces and to try to restore Nubian control over Egypt. 
His campaign was initially successful and he was able to take Memphis, the ancient capital of Egypt. However, the Assyrians were not easily defeated and they soon launched a counterattack against Antimani's forces. The Assyrians were ultimately successful in driving the Nubians back to Nubia, and Tantamani was forced to retreat from Egypt. During the Assyrian invasion in both Taharqa and Tantamani's reigns, the armies plundered the country of its riches. As a result, the Assyrians took a large booty of gold, silver, precious stones, clothes, horses, and exotic animals. Among the most notable items that the Assyrians seized were two obelisks covered in electrum and were originally erected in the temple of Amun at the city of Napata in Nubia and weighed 75.5 tons each. The Assyrians transported these obelisks to their capital city of Nineveh, where they were erected as war trophies and remained there for centuries until the city was eventually destroyed and the obelisks were lost to history. In the 19th century, however, archaeologists discovered the remains of the obelisks at the ancient Assyrian site of Nimrud. Although they were damaged and broken into pieces, they are still considered some of the largest and most impressive ancient Egyptian monuments ever found outside of Egypt. After Tantamani's failed attempt to reconquer Egypt, Assyria regained control over the region, marking the end of the Nubian dynasty's control over Egypt. However, Tantamani's authority continued to be recognized in Upper Egypt until Samtuk I, the founder of the 26th dynasty, peacefully took control of Thebes in his eighth year of reign in 656 BCE. Despite his defeat, Tantamani is remembered for his efforts to resist the Assyrian conquest of Egypt and to restore the power of the Nubian kings in the region. His reign marked the end of the 25th dynasty of Egypt and the beginning of the 26th dynasty, which was the last native dynasty to rule Egypt before the Persian conquest in 525 BCE. The Nubian era of Egypt was marked by the concentrated efforts at the renewal and restoration of Egypt's holy places. Piyu expanded the Temple of Amun at Jebel Barkal, which was a sacred mountain in Nubia, by adding an immense colonnaded forecourt, and Shabaka is remembered for his efforts to restore the great monuments and temples of Egypt, unlike his Libyan predecessors, who had neglected these sacred sites. Taharqa enriched Thebes on a tremendous scale. At Karnak, he and his chief architect, Menchuem had built the sacred lake structures, the kiosk in the first court, and the colonnades at the temple entrance. He also built new temples at Kawa and Jebel Barkal, and military settlements at the Semna and Buhin forts, and the fortified site of Kasribram, to help secure Egypt from invasion by hostile forces. The Nubian king's efforts to restore and expand Egypt's holy places contributed to the kingdom's prosperity and helped to solidify its position as one of the most important civilizations of the ancient world. Their 25th dynastic reign has been proved to be one of the most prosperous in ancient Egypt. During this Nubian dynasty, there was a renewed interest in the construction of pyramids, especially in Nubia. These pyramids were built on a smaller scale than their counterparts in Giza and were constructed over a period of several centuries, from around 800 BCE to 300 C. The earliest pyramids at Meroe were step pyramids, similar in style to the pyramids of Egypt's Old Kingdom period, and featured a series of rectangular platforms, each smaller than the one below. They were built of sun-dried mud brick, and examples include the pyramids at the cemetery of Kawa, which date to the 8th century BCE. Later pyramids at Meroe were simpler in design, featuring smooth steep sides and a flat top, and unlike the earlier step pyramids, they were built using large, finely cut blocks of sandstone or granite. One of the most intriguing features of these pyramids is the fact that many of them appear to have had cylindrical or spherical tops. Scholars have speculated that these may have been made of materials such as gold or bronze that have since been destroyed or perished. Steps were carved into the rock to the east of each pyramid leading down to a sealed entrance. Behind the entrance, there were underground rooms with vaulted ceilings, three for a king and two for a queen, implying that the queens were often buried alongside their rulers. In the oldest pyramids, the burial chamber was decorated with scenes from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. A wooden coffin, depicting the dead person's face, was placed in the burial chamber together with sacrificed bodies of animals and, in some cases, human servants. Attached to one side of a standard Meroe pyramid was a chapel, its entrance formed by twin tapering pylons. Inside, it was common to place a stella, an offering table, and a statue of the Ba, who was the aspect of the human soul believed to give the deceased their individuality, and it was depicted as the body of a bird and a human head. The Meroe pyramids were not just tombs, but also served as religious sites, and these chapels were used for offerings and rituals performed by the priests and family members of the deceased. 
In addition to the pyramids at Meroe, there are also a number of other Nubian pyramids scattered throughout the region, including the sites of Nuri and Jebel Barkal. Nuri also contains a number of other monumental structures, including temples, palaces, and other tombs. The rulers of the 25th dynasty, including Alara and his successor Kashta, were buried at El Kura in tombs that were relatively modest compared to the later pyramids built by their successors at Nuri. The tombs were built of sandstone, with a small pyramid or truncated pyramid on top, and contained underground burial chambers with sarcophagi and funerary goods. Studies of horse skeletons from El Kuru have shown that the finest horses used in both Kushite and Assyrian warfare were bred in Nubia and were highly prized for their speed, agility, and endurance, and were likely used in both cavalry and chariot units. In addition to the horses, El Kuru has also yielded evidence of the chariots used by the Kushites. These chariots were likely drawn by teams of two horses and were equipped with spoked wheels, which made them more maneuverable and efficient than earlier designs. After the fall of Napata to the Assyrians in 591 BCE, the Kushite capital was relocated further south to the city of Meroe. This city was strategically located between the Nile and Atbara rivers and served as a hub for the trade routes that linked Central Africa to the Red Sea. However, despite the move, Napata continued to be an important religious center for the Kingdom of Kush, as it was home to the Temple of Amun, who was the god of creation and fertility and it was believed that the pharaohs of Kush were his earthly representatives. In around 31 BCE, Egypt was attacked by the Romans, which led to their pharaoh, Cleopatra, who is the most famous female pharaoh in the country to take her own life. The Romans didn't stop there, but started pushing further down to Nubia. Napata was plundered a second time in 23 BCE, this time by the Romans, and the city was largely destroyed, but was later rebuilt and continued to serve as an important center of worship. In this attack, the Roman governor named Petronius launched a campaign to conquer the kingdom of Meroe, but his forces were met with fierce resistance from the Meroites, led by their queen, Amani Arenas. This queen was a powerful ruler who was known for her bravery and strategic military tactics and led her armies into battle. In Strabo's book Geography, he states that the queen had lost one of her eyes in battle in a statement that read, This queen had a reputation for masculine courage and she lost an eye in battle but this did not stop her from fighting and leading her people to victory. In the conflict with Rome, she is said to have personally led her troops across the border and attacked the Roman garrison in Aswan, causing significant damage to Roman fortifications and taking prisoners. Although the Meroites were eventually defeated by the Roman army, the attack on Aswan is remembered as a significant event in ancient Nubian history, and Queen Amani Renas is celebrated as a hero and symbol of Nubian resistance to foreign aggression. Her story has been passed down through oral tradition and was recorded by ancient Greek and Roman historians. During this Meroitic era, Kush had other important cities in addition to Meroe that included Musa Waratess Sufra and Naka. Musa Waratess Sufra was an important religious center and contains many temples and other religious structures. The site is known for its great enclosure, a large complex of temples and courtyards surrounded by a wall. The walls of the enclosure are up to 10 meters high and are decorated with reliefs depicting various animals, including elephants, giraffes, and lions. The Lion Temple, which is located near the entrance, was built by Amenhotep III, an Egyptian pharaoh who ruled in the 14th century BCE and was later modified and expanded by the Nubian kings. The temple was dedicated to the god Apedimak, who was a lion-headed deity and the patron god of the Meroitic kingdom and its walls are decorated with intricate carvings depicting scenes from Meroitic mythology. This site also includes a large processional avenue, a reservoir, and a series of smaller enclosures and courtyards. The architectural style of this place is unique in the ancient world, with a complicated ground plan that is without parallel in the Nile Valley and has been the subject of extensive archaeological research in recent years. The presence of numerous elephant depictions may indicate that elephants were trained at this site, possibly for military and ceremonial purposes, while the large enclosures may have served as enclosures for herding them. Naka was an important city in the Meroitic and post-Meroitic periods and contains many temples and other structures, with the most famous being the Temple of Amun, which features many reliefs and inscriptions that depict scenes from the lives of the gods and the rulers of the time. Seta Inga was another important center of worship and burial for Kush kingdom, with the most significant feature being the Egyptian temple of Queen Tia, who was the royal wife of Amenhotep III, one of the most powerful pharaohs of the New Kingdom period of ancient Egypt. 
This temple was built in the queen's honor during the reign of her son, Akhenaten, and served as a center of worship for both Egyptian and Nubian communities in the area, and the site contains a number of inscriptions that attest to the religious syncretism that was common in this region. The Seti Inga site also contains a large necropolis that dates back to the kingdoms of Napata and Meroe, and contain a number of sepulchres and burial mounds, many of which are adorned with elaborate reliefs and inscriptions. The matrilineal succession system in Nubia was unique in the ancient world, with the Queen Mother playing a critical role in ensuring the continuation of the royal line, differing from the more common patrilineal succession seen in other cultures, where the son of the king would inherit the throne. In this system of succession, the sister of the king held a position of great importance, as her son would be the next in line to the throne. The title given to the Queen Mother of Kush was Kandika, with notable ones including Amani Renas, who we've seen how she led the Meroitic forces against the Roman Empire in the Battle of Aswan, and Amani Shaketo, who is credited with expanding the kingdom's borders and constructing several monumental buildings, including her own pyramid. During the Meroitic period, there was a prevalence of reigning queens. In fact, out of the eight kings who ruled during the first century, six were succeeded by their sisters or wives. The Kushite monarchy was also not as despotic as that of Egypt, and the nobility and priesthood occasionally removed kings who were deemed incompetent or unfit to rule. This was particularly true when the king was weak or inexperienced, and the nobility and priesthood acted as a check on his power. The Meroitic script was developed around 300 BCE and differed fundamentally from the Egyptian scripts. Unlike Egyptian hieroglyphs, which often represent whole words or concepts, the Meroitic script had a simple alphabet of 23 symbols, which could be combined to form words, and was written from right to left. Another unique feature of this script is that it includes vowel notations, which are absent in Egyptian and most Semitic scripts. This made the Meroitic script more versatile, as it could represent a wider range of sounds and words. The Meroitic script replaced Egyptian as the language of the court in the kingdom of Meroe, and from the 2nd century BCE, it was almost exclusively employed as the written language as well. Since there are no bilingual inscriptions to provide us with access to the language, it is difficult to decipher it, however, scholars have been able to make some progress in understanding the script and language by comparing it to other known languages of the region and using linguistic analysis to identify common patterns. Under the reign of King Tanyi Damani, a text of significant length written in the Meroitic language was discovered on a stela containing a detailed government report and temple endowments. This event marked a turning point in the use of the Meroitic script and language, as Meroitic hieroglyphs became increasingly prevalent and eventually replaced Egyptian writing altogether. The text on the stela also provides insight into the political and religious practices of the time. The Meroitic language itself remains poorly understood, and if fully deciphered, it may help confirm or refute some of the current hypotheses about this ancient kingdom. Together with the language, much study is needed to be done on the area, just as it is in Egypt, so that humanity may understand the way of life in this neglected civilization, which has stood the test of time to prove to be a well-established independent kingdom. The Kushite people had an advanced knowledge in technology, medicine and mathematics, which has been revealed in recent findings. In the technological field, they developed a type of water wheel that they referred to as kala, in order to improve irrigation. Other early records of bloomery furnaces, that have been dated to at least the 7th and 6th century BCE, have also been discovered in Kush, and are thought to have been used in metalworking at Meroe. Nubians are also thought to have been great medical experts, as various mummies studied in the 1990s revealed that these people were pioneers of early antibiotics. The Nubians have been proven to be mathematical experts according to archaeological findings, including the engraved plans of the Meroitic King Amani Kabali's pyramids. These indicate the fact that Nubians had a sophisticated understanding of mathematics, as they appreciated the harmonic ratio, and even went ahead to establish a system of geometry, which they used in creating early versions of sun clocks among others. Not much is known about what led to the decline of this kingdom of Kush, but several theories have been brought forward, including but not limited to overcultivation of the land and overexploitation of the region's natural resources. Together with this, at the end of 400 C, various regions of the area splintered into smaller factions, each with their own leaders. These groups engaged in battles for control of present-day Nubia and its surrounding lands, resulting in a weakened and vulnerable region. Ultimately, Meroe was overthrown by the ascendant kingdom of Aksum in the south, which was ruled by King Izana. 
a stele written in Jez, which is an ancient script that is still in use in Ethiopia, attributed to an unnamed ruler of this kingdom, possibly King Izana, was discovered at the site of Meroe. According to its inscription, this king was the king of the Aksumites and the Amorites, which seemed to refer to Aksum and Himyar. This kingdom spanned northeast Africa and extended at its height into much of modern-day southern Arabia, and it is believed that this king reigned around 330 c. 